G'day everyone, Matt Elder of Family Bricks here, and in this video we're going to review Fun Hole FH 9001 Wood Cabin Retro House with Delight Lighting Kit. We'll look at the features of the product and then review in terms of build experience, value for money, displayability, and playability. Following this, we'll show a quick time-lapse speed build with commentary of the whole model before finishing off with an overall score for this set. This was sent to and provided to us by the manufacturer, but the opinions and review scores will be that of our own, so let's get into it. It goes without saying that the highlight of this set is the lighting kit and the effect that it has when it's turned on and illuminated in the dark. It's immensely satisfying once you've gone through this complex build. What I'd like you to do is take a guess as to how much this set would actually cost. Now to give you a bit of a helping hand, let's just say that there's 2,000 pieces and we normally work off a ratio of about 10p or 10 cents per part being a fair price. So you'd be looking at about 200 pounds, throw in a lighting kit which is maybe another 20 to 50 pounds or 20 to 50 dollars. So with that in mind, have a think about how much you think this set would be and we'll give you 5 seconds, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, this is 80 pounds. 100 US dollars or 115 euros. That does strike me as somewhat exceptional value and this is not a cheap quality product. To give you a sense of scale, I've put it next to assembly square and you can sort of see just how big it is and it is a decent size. In the past in some of the mocks I've made, I've had lights in them and I understand the challenges and how fiddly they can be and the issues that arise when you try to install light kits into sets. Let's start off by running through some features and starting off with, of course, the main one, which is going to be the lights. So you've got lights in your little place to saw your logs in there. You've got lights in these two dormer windows here, which can be quite sensitive. And if you touch them, they will turn off relatively easily. And then if we go along the side, you've got another light in here. And then you've also got some lights in the porch area here. And then if we come around a little bit further, you can have a look in through the back here and I'll take the roof off so you can get a bit of sense of what's going on inside. So inside you've got you know, a bedside lamp and a reading lamp on your actual desk, and then there's another light in under here, and then your fireplace has also got a little light in it as well, and another one sort of up on the under ceiling there. And then if you lift up into the actual basement as well, you then have another light in there, plus your battery pack, which you can either have in or out. And I'm being very careful here because you do have one of these wires attached down into here. So if you lift this straight off, you'll just yank at the actual light itself. So I'll try to gently just tilt this up and see if we can see. There you can sort of see all the wires and everything come into this socket here. And then that socket is then powered off this little battery pack, which has two double A's in it. This is all quite modular and your attic space will actually lift off and then you'll notice that these lights are on here but when you lift them off they'll disconnect from the circuit and turn themselves off. So there we go, they've turned themselves off and this will come out freestanding and the reason it does that is because you've got this little metal connection here onto the two contact points there and as you can see in the underside there's a light over here by this loft ladder and then there's another one just over here so it gives you the light into the actual ground story so just looking at the interior of the cabin itself there's some really great details in here nice little corner builds and everything going on here you've got like you know table chairs lounge and then you know, different utensils, windows are stacked all the way up there. And then you've actually got this sliding door for the shower. You also have a brick built door here, which opens. It can be a little bit tight on the tolerances, but yeah, works for what it needs to. Then just coming around, you know, more the fireplace, which lights up some really nice builds there. And then old style sort of radios and then record players and even a brick built bookshelf. You've also too got a little hatch down here, which I'll use some tweezers so my fat fingers don't get in the way, which can open up. So that hatch can open up there, and then you can just put it straight back down. And then out of there too, you've got that light, which is just down there, so it can have some light coming out and through as well. I'll try holding this in such a way that you can see into the bathroom, so you have like a little shower type receptacle, a toilet in there, and then if you come around, you know, a nice little detail on the faucet, towel, and then another strong light there in the actual bathroom itself. Coming around to the outside, you've got some nice little foliage and vegetation on the ground. 
and the way this steps and spindle and railings being built is quite cool and it just helps you know can come out and that which allows the actual rest of it to be able to pick up and take it apart in that modular format coming around here you've got a really nice brick built pine tree there or something similar and then you also have one little brick built sheepy out here as well then as you keep coming around as we saw a little bit before the back is not actually completely enclosed which i guess if you're going for that pure 100 percent modular then there might need to be some slight modifications but i don't think it'd be too difficult to put it back on that but it gives you nice access to everything else which is still inside and the roof itself is made out of lots of straight tiles so that you really get that sort of wood effect and then a few little stickers going onto the top of it and then coming around to the side here you can see how you have know, the two main parts of the roof in the apex a-frame then joining onto the porch there with some of the dormers sticking out here in terms of value and i know this is going to be controversial this is exceptional value but i'm actually going to give this 120 percent for the value rating when you're looking at something like this including lights including over 2,000 parts working out to about four cents or four p per part and with the bulk and everything here and the final effect that you get there's no question that there's just such great value here you know normally dealing with light kits they can be 25 to 50 pounds for this amount of stuff in here and for the most part it's been done quite well you've got lots of lights connections the battery pack everything in there and it's relatively well integrated into the instructions it's not like you're having to pull half the thing apart to try to get these fiddly wires in as long as you're focused when you're going through it it'll be quite good and the other thing that i've noticed is that the bricks in here are actually really good quality they don't feel cheap in your hand the clutch power is actually probably stronger than your most recognized brand i know there's a few times when there was a couple little side boo-boos which i made and when you're having to try to take these off they're actually got a stronger clutch than one of the other major brands. And certainly for the roof, I wouldn't want to be having to go through and undo that anytime soon. You know, it's not impossible, but you do notice that it is a stronger connection. So it's not a flimsy, cheap knockoff where you can feel that the parts are really bad quality. It's really spot on. I've only had this built for a couple of days, so it's hard to tell in terms of what's the longevity on the lights. But this seems to be their first model and they've come from doing light kits. So one would hope that they've figured out how to do a decent quality light kit which lasts. So certainly if you'd be looking for a cabin model with the lights, it stands by itself. You really can't go wrong with something like this. So talking about this in terms of build experience, this was quite a challenging build, but I think that's inherent in the nature of it. Light kits are always quite fiddly and they even recognize it by providing these tweezers which are actually good quality and you really do need it sometimes to be able to get your wires and just move them into position beyond that it does remind me of building like a, a mock or a fan built modular building it doesn't have the finesse of some of the instructions and everything and the way that you go through building it and the different bags and having pieces in different places coming from different bags was just something else you had to contend with and from dealing with mocks and other things like that you just used to and you don't get too worried if there's some leftover pieces you just move on and sometimes it comes all the way back i mean the really strange one i guess was when you had this little rocking chair which you're on bag four and then it just calls it out at that point you know go into bag seven and just build this little part which to be honest when i got to the end i'd forgotten about that and i had a whole bunch of pieces left over and saying like, mm, this is kind of weird but then realized that there was still something else I had forgotten to build. The instructions for the most part are pretty good. They're probably what I think probably 98, 99% there. There are some little weird quirks within it. There's sometimes, particularly when you're building some of these porches and things where you're putting pieces together in the instructions and they seem to be floating because instructions don't need to deal with gravity, but you sort of got to lay the pieces out and then go one or two steps forward to then figure out how they all join so you can do it. Not the end of the world, but you certainly notice it. And there's one or two subtle mistakes I found in the instructions. Like for me, there's only one of these sort of olive green two by threes, but in the instructions, it has that one as the same color, which it just isn't. Then when it comes to the bookshelf, the graphic that we have in here on one of the books is printed in a 90 degree orientation. Cause if you're trying to have that sticker put on the other direction, then it goes over the brick and doesn't make any sense. And speaking of stickers, they were a little bit different because it's like a two part sticker. You've got to peel it off the sheet, then place it down. And then there's another layer to sort of peel off. And particularly for some of the steps when you're doing the roof and you've got all these wood panels that can get quite a bit tedious after a while. For the most part, the lights, it's great that you're able to build it and then put the lights in as you're going. There were one or two quirks, particularly for these lights up here, where it's not really clear which way around 
the two by one piece goes and it does actually matter and it just felt like even though i was paying a lot of attention and getting the wires really quite taut it still seemed that there wasn't possible to follow the exact path of the wires that they wanted wrapping around certain studs because it, there just wasn't enough wire there to deal with overall for the most part though i quite enjoyed the build experience it was definitely challenging and it's something which i wouldn't necessarily hand off to a younger kid to do and the final result that you get is pretty cool and there wasn't too much repetitive type building you did get a little bit after a while with some of these panels and things in here but certainly nothing as like the ghostbusters firehouse which you just seem to be dealing with brickwork and lots of little tiles at nauseam it was nothing to that extent so overall for build experience i'm going to give it 75 percent it was a challenging build light kits inherently make it quite challenging and just the way of managing bags and the instructions and everything came together it wasn't something which was slick and seamless and particularly with some of the lights you're trying to fiddle with it and then with some of the lights it wasn't 100 percent seamless and i'm still not convinced with how some of them are sitting and hence a few points off for that score in terms of displayability this model is obviously all about displayability particularly trying to get it into a night sort of scene having all the lights there you know the lights are just one of those sorts of things which really just take it up to the next level and it's so satisfying once you've got a finish built just having it sitting there lights on all illuminated giving that really in the woods type feel so probably going for a really good building in terms of really maximizing the use of those lights and utilizing them in you know many different ways particularly also inside with the fireplace what i'd really love to see with one of these is actually sitting in a city of other uh, buildings i think it's going to work quite well sitting in there and out of the box to get all that with your lights and being able to display it and just with the lights having that lift above the normal sort of level of just a standard building kit i think that's fantastic the only thing i took a few slight little points off is i find trying to get these lights to stay on can be quite fidgety this roof just doesn't feel like it's sitting as tight as what it possibly could do so you do have to sometimes just jiggle this roof around a little bit and i don't think it helps the way that the connectors just at the base there they feel like they're just popping up just a little bit but on the flip side of that you're able to take this apart into modular sections quite easily i can take the roof and the dormers off you can take the loft level off you can take the floor off and most of it just works on passing the electrical current through simple connecting connectors so it's really easy to take those couple of elements off and you don't have to worry about wires sort of you know getting in the way and having to unwire something just so that you can get access to the bits that you like. So for that reason, overall, I give it a 95% for displayability. There's only a few little quirks, but otherwise it does exactly what it needs to do and does it really, really well. In terms of playability, it's got some really nice features within it, but the obvious drawback is that it doesn't have a figure of some kind. Okay, yes, you do have a brick built sheep, and I can understand that as a company, this is kind of their first foray into that. So trying to also create that sort of mold or trying to do figures is gonna be quite challenging that said though they're still not here and i do think that's just a little final component which is probably missing from this to make it really perfect in that regard but otherwise there's a lot of different play features you got the door which opens a rocking chair there you can have figures moving around in the spaces taking it apart and then once you come around in through the back here there's obviously lots of different things that can be doing like you can see how easy that was just to take the roof off to get access and it's a full sort of setup and the sort of little things like you know the loft ladder coming down i mean the space for that to come down is a little bit quirky in there but it's easy enough to go through and create your own little scenarios the only thing i would be a little bit cautious of is if you got this with kids and they just happen to rip this lower level straight off if it's wired in down underneath it's going to rip at one of those wires and potentially have some issues with that and that would be the main sort of comment is if you're getting kids in playing with it how heavy-handed they can be and still have a lot of the lights functioning and not pulling too taut on the wires so that they break that would always have me a little bit concerned the other thing i feel too with this is that it is just slightly over the scale for playing with normal sort of figures within this sure it can still work and everything but when you've got a rocking chair which is that sort of size and then the doors and the windows are the size that they are it does just feel like the building is just a little bit too big but that's really being nitpicky on that aspect 
So overall, I give playability about 60%. You know, there's lots of good features and everything in here. How robust it is with all the lights and wires and not having some form of actual figure included sort of does limit the options a little bit. And parts of the model just do feel a little bit fragile. And I know when I was touching this earlier, like the, the tree doesn't take much to sort of break off. Now we'll just go through a quick time lapse. As with anything, start off with the base plate and you start building out parts of the log area and then the faux basement with the light in there already and then building out some more stairs coming through and putting in the foliage and uh, the pen. Now we're on to building the ground floor level and you start off with putting on a lot of tiles to get that sort of wood type parquetry effect. And then from there going through just starting to build in some little details, the bathroom, putting in the wall. And then we're going through adding some stuff into sort of like the kitchen area there. Again more details, a sliding door for the shower and go through here there's a brick built front door then building up the rest of the front coming through doing the sort of oven cooker with the light hanging out there before coming up with the wall with lots of snot before covering it in all the little tiles going in wiring in some more lights coming out the front doing the porch and getting that and then that was a freaky part turning that thing upside down to put in that socket and now we're into the attic floor same sort of thing again going through adding in lots of wires that that part of the step is quite tricky trying to figure out the direction to get that in there and getting that all because it's pretty tight same sort of thing ends now onto the roof going through again lots of little tiles just coming through putting them in getting the textures the roof is actually in three parts and this is the third part here clip the two roof parts together add on the little porch and then slide it on building out the dormers with some more lights before finishing off with a sheepy and a tree which is a fun little technique for creating that tree just recapping this is a fun hole fh 9001 wood cabin retro house delight 79.99 pounds 99.99 us dollars or 114.99 euros it's 2097 pieces which works out to 3.8 p or 4.8 cents per piece and the build time is probably about 8 to 10 hours build experience 75 percent value for money 120 percent playability 60 percent and displayability 95 percent we'd say the target market is fans of mocks or modulars with lights the pros is that's a fantastic build with lights and details there's a variety of building techniques and a really good quality product the cons being that is a challenging quirky build and there's no figures included summarizing it's a great value display set with a light kit our overall score is a very respectable 88 percent what are your thoughts is this something you'd be interested in purchasing let us know in the comments below or just type the word fun hole and we'll know you've watched the complete video if you've enjoyed don't be afraid to hit that thumbs up button and or be super awesome and share and subscribe link around the video to where this product can be purchased if you'd like to see more details on the instructions or generally what is in the box and the kids reaction check out our unboxing video here Otherwise, here are some other videos you might like. Thanks for watching this Family Bricks video, and we'll see you in the next video.